Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel where today we are going to be doing my April end of month wrap up. So everything I read in the last two weeks of April. Now, uh, obviously this isn't covering the first two weeks in which I read The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chakshi, When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain by Nee Vo, Velveteen vs. the Seasons by Shauna McGuire, After Eden by Helen Douglas, Calculated Risks by Shauna McGuire, and The Spirit Thief by Rachel Aaron. If you are interested in any of those books and my thoughts on them, I will leave my mid-month wrap-up down below. But we have a lot to discuss for the last two weeks, so we're just going to jump right in. So first up, I read um, Sapphire Flames and Emerald Blaze by Alona Andrews. Now, this is our books four and five in the Hidden Legacies series. It is an adult urban fantasy paranormal romance uh, series, and these two books are are the first two books in the second trilogy. And we're following our main character of Catalina Baylor, and she lives in this interesting world where a hundred years ago a serum was made, and if you drink it, um, either you die, you turn into a monster and then die, or you end up with magic, which turns out to be a genetic thing, so you can pass it down on, pass it down to your children. And uh, Catalina lives in a world where that has obviously changed everything. She happens to run a private investigation business for her family. And it's just very, very interesting. These are rereads for me and I listen to them on audiobooks as part of a project to see if I like audiobooks. Um, I did a video with my reactions on what it was like to try out audiobooks for the first time that I will leave linked down below. But basically my thoughts on this book are, I love this world. I love it so much. Um, it is just so, the world building is just phenomenal. Um, one thing I didn't appreciate is that the audiobook made it much more clear that Catalina is young and she's like 21 and it was just like, oh yeah, she's, she's very young. Okay. Um, but mostly I just really love this series. This trilogy with Catalina and her love interest, Alessandro, is interesting, but I think I'm waiting, just really waiting for that third book because I think it's going to make or break this trilogy for me. But overall, I really did enjoy my time with them and I left the ratings alone, which I originally gave them four and a half stars. After that, also part of the audiobook project, I listened to This Is How You Lose a Time War by um, Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. And this is an adult science fiction romance between two uh, time traveling agents. Basically, they are from they are from two different mutually exclusive futures. And so each of them are going back in time to change the past to try to secure the future that they come from. Um, but in each other, they recognize a formidable opponent and start leaving each other letters that very quickly turn into love letters as they fall for each other. Um, I really loved this in general. Like when I first read it last year in 2020, it was great. Um, I, it was one of my favorite books of the year. And I think that this is also a really good book. It's well suited for audio. Um, so part of that is because there's really only two major characters. There's not a ton of dialogue. Um, but also what I found is that it really helped me to listen to this because as the letters turned into love letters, the language around them got much more flowery. And so as I listened to it, it was much easier for me to be able to listen and kind of get the gist of what's being said rather than when I was physically reading it where I went because when I was doing that, I was like parsing out each of the sentences, trying to figure out the meaning. And so a lot of it was kind of like lost on me. Um, but just listening to it on audio was great. Additionally, it also helped me with the issue that I had where the ending kind of gets a little sci-fi-y and it seemed to come out of nowhere the first time I read it. But when I listened to the audio, it was much more clear that no, it wasn't out of nowhere. It was like, it was laid down correctly, um, and so the pacing just felt a lot better. So I really loved it. I'm really excited to go back and reread this physical copy again because 
I did find that I enjoy, I still enjoy physical copy much more. Um, but I left this rating alone as well because uh, with where I originally gave it five stars and I still think that's appropriate. And then next I read Blood Air by Alona Andrews, the first book in the Raelia writer series. So this is an adult urban fantasy and it is a spinoff from the Kate Daniels series. And the premise just being that in this world, magic comes in waves and when it does, Everything technological dies, and then the magic leaves, and technology reasserts itself. Um, our main character in this one is Aurelia Ryder, a.k.a. Julia, Julie, Leonard, Julie Olson Leonard. Um, she is the ward of Kate, and basically she left eight years ago, and she did some things, and basically it changed everything about her from her appearance to her voice to her magic so nobody should know who she is um there is a prophecy that is happening and there is also a person who has decided he is out to get kate and so aurelia comes back to try to um keep kate safe um but she can't because of this prophecy she's not allowed to actually see Kate and so she's trying to keep her true identity secret and the story goes from there and this was amazing this was it absolutely perfect if you're a fan of the Kate Daniel series please pick this up it is so amazing um for those of you that don't know this actually started as um was po being posted on Alona Andrews's blog uh, a chapter at a time and it was done because a, in the midst of the pandemic, a nurse wrote to them and basically said, can you please just put up something? I'm like, it, it gives me, I, I like to read it on my lunch break and like, I'm slowly losing my mind. So please, please. And so this is what they came up with. And the lovely thing about it is it really felt like this also, they, they sat down and really thought about what would the fans want? Because that's what we got. We got to see everybody from the previous series. We got to see what they were doing. It never felt gratuitous. So it wasn't like, you know, we got the whole life story of what they've been doing for the last eight years. But we got to peek into their lives. There's some mysteries here and there, um, which were delightful. But it was just honestly so good. And they're just, like I said, this world is really interesting. And the the plot that we had for this book was also just well done. And so, um, I loved this. Now, if you haven't read Kate Daniels, this is technically a standalone, but I don't think that the impact is going to be there for you. I think that it's, it's not going to be, it's going to be like a three or four star book for you. It, I don't think that this could possibly be a five star book unless you have already read Kate Daniels. Um, so, but I did give this five stars. I loved it. It might be my favorite book. It's pro so far, it is my favorite book of the year. Um, and then, and that brings us to the last week of April. And I thought I was doing great because at that point, in, at this point in April with one week left to go, I hadn't DNF'd anything. And I, I have been DNFing so many books late, lately. Like as of the end of March, I had DNF 15 books. And I was, I went into this last week going, it's amazing. I'm going to end April and like have no DNFs. And then, and then the last week happened and I DNFed six books in the last week, six of them. I did read one thing in the middle. So we're going to start with the one thing that I did read. And then I'll go ahead and talk about why I DNFed all the other books after that. But... So we're starting with Defect by Nino Cipri. Um, this is the second book in the Lytenverse uh, series of novellas, which is an adult speculative fiction, I believe, series. But in this, we're following our main character of Derek, who is Lytenvarl's like best employee until he calls in sick one day, and then his loyalty is being questioned by the management. So he is assigned to the special inventory team for an overnight shift dealing with unusual inventory. And then he gets there and he realizes it's not just inventory that's unusual, it's also that special inventory team. 
Now I already did a full length review for that, for this book. So I will go ahead and leave that linked down below if you are interested in my full thoughts. But generally speaking, I thought that the world building on this was good. I really liked um, seeing out, seeing the expansion out of like this company and how things work within it. Um, I really liked the general plot line. It just kind of took me along for the ride and I enjoyed that. Um, this is really a story about Derek's kind of self-discovery of who he is and who he wants to be. And in that, I think that was good. However, it did mean that the ending was a little bit unsatisfying because we don't really know where Derek is going to be going from here. We don't even have enough of a hint to feel okay with it, or at least I didn't feel okay with it. I needed just a little bit, something a little bit more to um, feel like that his story arc got closed out. But otherwise, you know, that was my major complaint with this. Um, however, I will say there are two warnings because it's just, it's things where your mileage may vary, right? So the first stop is that uh, the special inventory team, this isn't a spoiler, it's on the back are alternate versions of Derek and there is romantic interest between two of those Dereks, which I found a little to be a little bit off-putting, but again, your mileage may vary. The other thing to note is that at least in my copy, there was a typo where the wrong name was inserted into a sentence, which um, made it so that the non-binary character was getting misgendered. Now, I was able to figure out like what name was supposed to be in there and it was fine, but it was a little bit jarring. So I just kind of wanted to warn you ahead of time that that is a thing that I noticed in this. But overall, I really liked this and I ended up giving it four stars. So after that, we have all of my DNFs and you guys, I DNF six books in seven days. So I don't remember all the main character names. Uh, I'll tell you them when I remember them, but otherwise like I don't remember a lot of them, to be honest. So the very first book that we're going to talk about is The Game Plan by Kristen Callahan. And this is really just a very basic like football romance, adult football romance. Dex is interesting because he's like the big tattooed center, but apparently he's also a virgin. I don't know. And like the female lead is sister-in-law to a different uh, football player's sister-in-law to a different football player. There we go. Um, and I DNF this at page 40. I found that the characterization was inconsistent. I thought that the, pa I thought the pacing was very strange because I DNF this at page 40 and based off of where they were in the story, it felt like this should be a novella, not a full length novel. Um, and so to me that says that there's probably going to be a lot of like second act drama, which I, I just don't do. That's not my thing. Um, but really like the big problem that I had is to me, it felt very much like listening to a kid play with dolls where the storyline is really simple and everybody is perfect. That's kind of what it felt like to read. And so it just wasn't doing it for me. So I went ahead and DNF'd it. After that, we have Uninvited by Sophie Jordan, and this is a young adult science fiction, maybe dystopian-esque kind of thing. Um, but we're following our main character who is a teenager and has just been test done her genetic testing. And it is determined that she has the HTS gene or homicidal tendency syndrome gene, which now puts her in a completely different class of people that has significantly less rights and she's trying to deal with it. And the story goes from there. And honestly, I just didn't, I DNF'd this around page 40. I didn't like the main character. I thought the writing was really clunky and I could just, I could see the shape of the story that was going to be told and I could tell what themes were going to be explored. And because I hadn't really connected with the book at that point, I just didn't care. And so I DNF'd it. After that is You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogel, and this is an adult romance, and we're following our main characters of Naomi and Nicholas, and they are actually engaged. And it turns out that Naomi realizes she doesn't really want to be engaged to him, and so she kind of starts pranking him. And it, because whoever breaks up 
uh, whoever calls off the engagement has to pay all the non-refundable um, deposits for the wedding and she doesn't want to do it. And then in the process of this whole thing, they, as they're like letting go of a lot of assumptions about what their relationship should be, they realize that they actually really like each other. So I really tried with this one. I made it to page 105 and I don't think I liked really anything about this book. So our main female lead, female main character, Naomi, um, I, I, I just did not like her. She had some weird ideas about like, this is what a perfect fiance is supposed to be. And so that's what she's trying to do. And it just, I, it felt dumb to me. And then she would lie about things like, you know, Nick, Nicholas would be like, Hey, I should really teach you how to like change a tire. And she would bristle that he would assume she didn't know. And so she'd be like, I already know how to change a tire, but she didn't. And so like, I just, I hate the lie, that kind of stupid lying. And then the other thing is she's prone to flights of paranoia, paranoia, especially with a certain group of people that she works with. And I hated it. I was like rolling my eyes so hard at the chapter that I read where she was at work and they were entertaining these like paranoid ideas. I really hated it. And here's the thing. The male main, main character, Nicholas, isn't all that much better. He is actually to some extent better because he's at least, it feels like he's genuinely trying at some points, but he's still kind of a terrible person. And the reality is this is described as they're in a relationship they don't want to be in. And so they're pranking each other. But that's like what I had in my head is that they were just kind of bored with each other. And so they were letting loose a little bit. And then it was maybe not, it wasn't necessarily kind hearted, but it wasn't like evil or anything like nothing awful. But that's not really what we got. We got people who really didn't like each other in this relation, both unhappy in this relationship, manipulating situations to be put the other person in like a really awful situation. And, and, and I just couldn't do it. Like, the thing is, like, I, that's just mean. That's like nemesis level. And that is not something like you're telling me that I'm gonna supposed to root for this couple who are like, being jerks to each other? No, I, I am so not here for that. And I'm not entirely certain how anybody could have ended up rooting for this couple. So for me, this just absolutely did not work. And like I said, I DNF'd it after page 105. And then we get to For Darkness Shows the Stars by Diana Peter, Peter Freund. And this is a young adult, like dystopian type setting where we're in the future and essentially humanity was messing with genes too much to the point where we messed up our population and um, there is a very large number of people who are extremely low intelligence and mute. Um, the only saving grace is that there were a bunch of people called the Luddites who went in the caves and like didn't allow any genetic manipulation and after everything went terribly, they kind of came out and now they're running society and these, the genetically modified people, the reduced are essentially slaves for them. It's kind of like that benevolent ownership concept from, um, the others by Anne Bishop and all of this was, and then, and then in this, so that's the background for this story, which is basically a retelling of Persuasion by Jane Austen, which is a romance, um, which I've never read. <laughs> anyway, I DNF this around page 40 because it had some of that weird YA world building stuff where they just throw random terms at you and don't explain anything. And I feel like it's supposed to be enticing you, but it always annoys me. Um, so all of that world building like with the genetic modification, that isn't actually explained until about page 40. Um, so I found that really, I didn't really love that. There's no really, um, I read reviews and apparently there's no real interrogation of this benevolent ownership or slavery. Um, there, and like, 
it's a retelling of persuasion. So it's a YA romance, which I just generally don't do well with. And also like I heard some other things about this that it, like just didn't really work for me. Uh, I'm not going to get into spoilers though, even though I spoiled this book for myself to some extent. Anyway, I just really wasn't feeling it. So I went ahead and DNF'd it around page 40. And then we have Dream Strider by Lindsay Smith. And this is a young adult fantasy. Um, and we're following our main character who has the ability to inhabit a person's body when they are sleeping and like basically get up and pilot the body around. And that makes her an excellent spy. And she uncovers this interesting or this this big plot against her empire. And she's got to like, you know, do her best to try to stop this evil plot. And the story goes from there. And honestly, this is just a mismatch of what I wanted. Um, I was really hoping for low fantasy. And when I realized it was high fantasy, I thought, okay, well, maybe. But I just didn't like the world. Again, we got that weird YA world building thing where they just throw terms at you, which just annoys me. But I didn't really like the main character either. And honestly, I just really wasn't feeling it. So I DNF this at page 28. And then lastly, our last DNF is Mind Games by Carolyn Crane. And this is an adult urban fantasy book where we're following our main character of Justine. And she is a hardcore hypochondriac. And uh, she's it's really affecting her life until one day a man appears and says, I can help you with that. And it turns out what he means by that is he's going to train her to put her hypochondriac chondria fear into other people. Only he says that all of these people are bad people who managed to escape justice. And so he asks her to join her ba his band of vigilantes. And the story goes from there. And actually, that storyline was great. Like that urban fantasy, her doing her hypochondria thing was really interesting. Like how she did it and how she really stoked up people's fears to kind of prime them before like, you know, expelling all of her hypochondria fear into them to really like just push it over into just a, an attack um, was all that was so, so interesting. But there were other things going on that I just wasn't as interested in. There was a storyline with her new boss, Packard, the, the leader of this gang of vigilantes, which I just didn't care about. And I know it's setting up for the overarching plot, but again, I just didn't care. There was this weird, like, serial killer storyline where, just kind of in the background, where there's this serial killer in her city going around hurling bricks at people to kill him. And I just felt, it felt kind of out of place and strange. And I think I know where that's going as well. But like, again, it, it just felt kind of out of place. And then the other thing that kind of interfered was the fact that Justine has a, a sexual interest in basically all the guys. So her boyfriend, the, her boss Packard, her coworker, the police chief, which is more fantasy because she's never actually met him. But there's enough page time devoted to how she feels about these people and that it really just, for me, with all of these things, it felt out of balance to me. Um, and so for, like, I really wanted more of that hypochondria storyline and we just had all this other stuff happening that I just didn't care about. And so I just ended up DNFing this at about page 114. And I will say that if you're interested in this, it's going to be really helpful if you actually like paranormal romance, because like th that sexual interest is pretty, it's, it's consistent throughout the part that I read. So there you go. That was all the books <laughs> that I read and DNF'd. So what am I going to be doing with everything? Well, the three audiobooks that I read, Sapphire Flames, Emerald Blaze, and This Is How You Lose the Time War, they're all going back to the library that I borrowed them from. Um, the two books that I actually read and enjoyed, uh, Blood, Air, and Defect, are going on my shelves behind me um, with the rest of the books that I love. And then... Um, the game plan 
and uninvited and that you deserve each other and for darkness shows the stars those actually i all um i borrowed from the library so those also are getting returned to the library and then the two books that i own mind games and dream strider are going onto the top of my unhaul pile because i'm not allowed to keep anything that i dnf additionally going on to my um, unhaul pile is double cross which is the second book in the disillusionist series which starts with mind games and then also two other books that I pulled off my shelf, the first being A Spy in the House by Y.S. Lee, which is the first book in the Agency series, which I did read and, and I really enjoyed. Um, I liked the first three books of this series, but the fourth book I didn't, and it kind of ruined the series for me, so I don't think I'm ever going to reread this, so it's going to leave. And then lastly is Dawnbreaker, Superman Dawnbreaker by Matt De La Pena, mostly because I thought that this was okay, but not amazing. And Matt De La Pena has, um, uh, he's kind of a problem. He's got some, some issues. Like there's been some accusations of sexual misconduct. Um, and so I don't really feel comfortable having this on my shelf, especially since this book just isn't that amazing anyway. And so this is leaving. That is it. We made it to the end of the video. <laughs> If you have made it far, this far, let me know down below. If you have any thoughts about the books that I read, let me know what you read in the month of April. Uh, but that is all I have. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And until next time, have happy reading and I will see you in the next video. Bye!